Hello and welcome to another episode of Stepping Up. I'm your host, Danielle Dubois. We continue to feature the organizations who benefited from the proceeds raised at the Prime Minister's Ball as part of this year's independence celebrations. We have done a few so far, but there are so many more examples of charitable organizations filling the gap, supporting St. Lucians, and just giving back. This week, we feature the team at Morgus Club 60. I chat with two passionate members of the organization and get to learn about their efforts in Chozelle. What started off as a simple move by one man in his community to find ways to engage and extend care for elderly persons in his community grew to become a string of Club 60 groups around the island who offer adult gay care services for our country's senior services. In this interview, I chat with Ms. Mary Pierre, the coordinator of the Adult Daycare Center in Morgouge, and she lets us know all that we need to and more in this first interview. I am here in the beautiful community of Chosel, or should I say Morgouge? Did I say properly Morgouge? All right, Morgouge um, Chosel, and I'm here with Mary Pierre, and she's a coordinator for the Morgouge Club 60, and they have been one of the selected organizations who will uh, be able to receive proceeds from the Prime Minister's Ball this year. So today we want to talk about Club 60 and I want to introduce you to my guest, Miss Mary Pierre. How are you? Thank you. <laughs> so let us know, um, let's talk about the beginning of the genesis of Club 60 and then we're going to come back to um, the donation that you guys received. But let us know how Club 60 started and what are some of the things that you guys have been up to. Well, Club 60 started in 1995 um, with Mr. I will say Mr. Averill was the founder of Club 60 because while he was looking for persons with uh, blind vision impaired persons, he discovered that was there was a lot of older persons who needed care. So he encouraged us people in the community to form organization called Club 60s mm -hmm. to help the elderly in the community. So that is why Club 60 is here. And we had 24 Club 60s in the community around here. 24 clubs? There was 24 when Mr. Avery started. Wow. So that's like the two pockets of people, people helping older helping people, older people in the community. We still have, but we have more in the South. I don't know if we have much. Okay. Because I know most of them, uh, they just die out. We are not getting enough, I think we are not getting enough younger people coming into the club to assist the older ones. Mm -hmm. So therefore the clubs, the older ones rely on somebody to do something and we are not getting them. But I can tell you from the south of the island, from modern Pope to Chazelle, mm -hmm. we have a strong, vibrant, Club school. Nice. We have an association of Southern Club 60, of which I am the president. Wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, I learned something today. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we are from Monrepo, mm -hmm. and these little groups come in together. And I'll tell you, they have done a lot of it. We are not um, we're publicizing our work, but we are doing a lot. All but I'm happy clubs you agree to publicize a little bit about what you guys did yes. today. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so we have been doing a lot of work from Monrepo, they have been building houses, from Chazelle, they have been renovating, doing this, doing that. So we do a lot of work by begging, and asking people to assist us, to assist us. Right. So we continue doing that. There's library, there's Sozel, there's um, Oje, Newport. And, and all the people come together that, that are helping our volunteers. Yes, you okay. see the people I have there are volunteers and one Well, um, we are not getting much volunteers. These people that they now are members of the club. Now okay. they themselves have their own um, assignment, but today they come out to help. I all, it's only me and the cook. The salary to pay caregivers, we need caregivers because we don't even have all the people here to get We need caregivers. But the way, um, assistance for caregivers is not true. Um, yeah. um, what does a typical day look like at um, Morgush Club 16? Um, and you said that it's not every day that you guys give care to the elderly. Right, so let me know, um, what does a typical day look like when they come through and 
you guys extend your care? It's very hectic. Being being alone as a coordinator, as a caregiver, and everything else. Mm -hmm. um, we are collecting them with the bus. We have a driver. Of course, we have to pay the driver to assist us in going around. If you know Victoria, up, down, go around, Monsia, and pick up mm -hmm. the people that come. And the same goes in the afternoon. Yeah, to drop them, them back. back home. So basically, it's, it's a space for them to come and spend the day. Spend the day, yes. Mm -hmm. And you take care and of them. You take care of them. They play dominoes just now. We see them on the table. <laughs> you are using the table now? Yes. <laughs> so um, they play dominoes. They have little games. We do their pressure. We do their um, basic. We, just, we were just doing basic um, personal care for them. We give them a break. Right now, they must be taking their break. And then we give them lunch. Okay. And how many days a week you guys? Three days. Three we operate on Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Okay. Uh, nice. Yeah. How many people do you guys have a part um, of that you extend your care to? And I also want to know how do you identify the persons that you want to help and bring in? Actually, we have a, a registration form. Okay. Why we register those who want to come? People okay. call us, and if they would like to drop their parents yes. mm -hmm. for the day, they are welcome. If they want to drop them on a monthly basis, they do. Mm -hmm. We have a, a, a fee attached to mm -hmm. per month. It's not much. It's just eighty dollars. Mm -hmm. The majority cannot. We don't um, send anybody away because you cannot pay. We accept everyone that mm -hmm. can. We do what we can. And God do that. <laughs> and you guys have been doing well because I'm talking about you today. She mentioned to me that earlier this year you guys celebrated 25 years yes. doing this work. So when you reflect for me, tell me what was your your most heartfelt moment or your proudest moment being the president and being a part of the club for so long. Well, um, I have a, a, a love for older person. My heart is very close to older person. Nice. Uh, seniors and younger ones children and being a health worker I work with all the persons from the health and I work in the health center for 10 years and as a nursing assistant then I went to the field because I wanted to meet the people in the field so I went to the field as a um, community health aid and then from there I discovered the real need of all the persons Imagine the five cents we were getting at the time. I don't see five cents. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> we could uh, we would use that to pay our passage to go five miles away from here to give the children to different people. Mm -hmm. We would use that when we go to the homes at eleven and the diabetic don't have food to eat to get a part of a biscuit or whatever we can get to feed that person. Mm -hmm. So that gave me a love for them. I am doing it because of the love for all the persons. The kind of um, the kind of needs you're seeing in the community. If you have a, go, a heart for a passion. Or a passion for them, yeah. then you will, you will just jump into that yeah, yes. and help. Because people who come and assist me are telling me, I have to. You have to be in it to know what it is. Yeah, I true. never knew that. Happens. And it's a very, I can imagine, um, rewarding experience. And especially, yes. as you say, it's very close to your heart mm -hmm. and you're passionate about it. Though it's very challenging. Mm -hmm. It's a very challenging um, work to work with all the persons. Mm -hmm. I have had challenges this morning What's that, that you have to overcome. <laughs> I can imagine. A lot of patience. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Patience. You have to tell them. You have to call them. You have to let them know. You will be all right. Okay, I'm not bathing today. <laughs> but I'm seeing the need for the bath, for yeah. the bath. Yes, yes, yes. But you say, you say, okay, I'm going to yeah. put your clothes on. Put a nice clothes. Yes. Make you feel nice. As you say that, I want to ask, how do you deal with, um, we talk about depression all the time, but you know that a lot of older people do suffer from depression. And um, 
I don't want to bring my family into this, but you know, my grandmother probably for the past decade is like, you will not see me next year, that's my last birthday. <laughs> and when you reach a certain threshold in age, it's almost as if like, boy, I'm waiting to go. And especially as you say that. Um, so how do you deal with depression? And how do you deal with um, those persons who start to feel like they're giving up? And, you know, because a lot of it is the mental and they feel like they can't move how they want to move and they, they lose their strength. And that's something that a lot of older people deal with. So, how do you deal Encouragement. with that? Encouragement. Mm -hmm. You have to encourage them. You have to make them feel that something will come out. Because my mother was a And also, I have, I have had how many said. You have to understand that. They will tell you, don't agree with them. Don't tell them what they say is not right. They are always right. Though you know it's not, yeah. but you always give them the right. Mm -hmm. You always tell them that it's right. You have to be patient. Yeah. Patient. Yeah. Okay, I will do it for you. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Because right there, they will come and call me and tell me, Oh, my pan is on the fire. Yeah, but yeah. My pan is on the fire burning. I said, okay, it's okay. Mm -hmm. I already turned the stove <laughs> off for you. Yeah. Okay? So you, you do little things like that yeah. with them. To be patient. Patient. Yeah. But don't tell them, oh, you have no stove. Don't them. Don't argue. You, you yeah. won't reach nowhere. Yeah. You just um, get them up. Yeah, so you have to be very patient. gentle yeah. and patient. What message do you have for young persons? And you know, you say that you're looking for volunteers and you're looking for caregivers. People to just come and give their time to help give back to the community. Why is it that you have to tell them about caring for the elderly and giving back to the elderly? Well, what I have to tell them is, exactly, we are growing up. I am saying aging is from the womb to the tomb. Yeah. That's how we do. Yeah. Actually, if we are lucky, we will reach that age. Yeah. Today we are young and tomorrow we are old. Mm -hmm. So, we are growing up. We have to look after the elderly because tomorrow might be somebody else looking after us. Sometimes we don't even have to be an elderly for people to look after us. But so many accidents we have in. So many different things that are doing. People yeah. getting okay. paralyzed. Younger people. Um, that's why we have an adult daycare center. We can take people once they are an adult. Mm -hmm. They don't have to be seniors mm -hmm. to come if they are an adult and we can assist with them. Mm -hmm. We don't take children, but we take adults. Right. Right. So um, in the, we are just on a journey. And I will say like, we have, it's a no return ticket. So when we take the ticket, we cannot return. They don't give you back the money. No, no return. Mm -hmm. So we have to enjoy it as it is. Enjoy the ride. It is good right now. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's rough. Sometimes you have to fall to the beach. No matter if you are rich, poor, yeah. wealthy, whatever. Mm -hmm. Aging has no respect. Yeah. And as you always will age yeah. at some times. And I think it's a privilege getting to see, because um, I, I adore my grandmother. And it's, it's amazing to see, um, just to be around them and see, you know, when you're younger, you remember how they used to be and then when you go into and how as time goes by, they require more attention and more love. And it's a blessing to be able to give that back. It's a blessing to be able to give that back. Mm -hmm. So I can imagine that your heart is full every day, <laughs> Very happy. walking this walk Very every happy. single day. I, I will tell you a little secret when I was a community health aide and I go out there on the field. Today I don't think that I do something. I do enough work. I don't get something. But when I get somebody that day who needed my help, I would see and feel good. Yeah. So, so. But Knowing when I go to the homes and see things that happen and the way people live, needy people, vulnerable people, I cannot see. Yeah. I cannot. Yeah, that is heavy. Yes, especially if it's raining, it's windy, 
like the couple we and did the, the house for there. Yeah. We renovated the house. And I had a really a beautiful last week after visiting the home after the COVID. Yeah. Well the COVID has exposed everything. Yeah. It's exposed a lot. And we are seeing a lot. And there will be we have an aging population. And now Do you think Saint Lucia has a, a, a really big aging population? Definitely. Mm -hmm. By 2025, we may have like right now we have 16 percent of our population mm -hmm. are on the buses. In Schwezel, we have the largest amount of older persons per population. Wow. Just last week, or last month, celebrate. Our oldest person in St. Lucia celebrated 100 years. Not far away from here, a oh. member of the group six. Wow. Not very far away, we have another 100 years. Wow. Are you very proud of that? Very proud. <laughs> and this lady, when she was 100, she makes sure. The one that's 102, when she was 100, she makes sure the children take her to the club 60 to have a party for her. And she didn't want it nowhere and invite every club member. Yeah, so it was so her. yeah, it was her. So this is so your you can see how they enjoy yeah. the club. Mm -hmm. It's a social we have social activities for them. Not only that we reach out to those inside the club, we reach out to those outside. Yeah. Like if we have wheelchairs, people donate wheelchairs, they donate crutches, they donate walking stick, we go out there. We got um, some some food parcels we distribute to the most vulnerable, those that don't come in here. Yeah. So those that are there, we feed them, those that are out, we still do something, that they can get something to eat. Nice. Yeah. As we wrap up, um, we know that you guys were selected to receive some funds from the Prime Minister's Ball from um, for independent celebrations. Um, let us know what have you done or what do you intend on doing with these funds and how has it basically helped your mandate and contributed to your work? Definitely, I must say a big thank you to the Prime Minister and the group who raised this one. I think it's... Um, the Independence Awards Committee. Right, yes. the Awards Committee. <laughs> um, it could not have come at a more opportune time. Because of COVID, we had to close for five months. Wow. And in going back to the people, a lot of them was going through to the mansion because we were close. They didn't have the socialization. Now, this morning will help us so much. We see so much to do with that it will finish. If we have to use it, we'll finish on it. But we are trying to, to do little. What it has helped us to do, we went to a couple and see the condition of the house, which was not good at all. We'll touch the house, and then you leave the piece will stay in your home. We had things, board, cardboard, whatever, to block it. And um, I said, so soon we're going to touch this couple's life. We're going to change. We're going to clean up. We did a clean up campaign. Like, we invite the council from Switzerland to do all the cutting of the grasses around the house because there was workers and other things. So we had to clean up and then repair. We are not completely complete yet. We have, well, they are sleeping better. But we still have to paint the place and do some other low cost. We are very happy that we are able to do that from the family. And next we look at our own mm -hmm. building. Everything that was closed during COVID had COVID. <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> All of our disabled like we have um, our windows broken and doors and other things. People tried to break into the no, facility? No, 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 no. no. But you're talking and about it's just dry rot. Okay, okay. So. okay, okay. So we are looking at renovating our your space, the space, mm -hmm. do little things we have to do, mm -hmm. and then we have um, the people to pay. We have the person who is cooking, 
you have to pay out. Yeah. We have to do pay with them to have a caregiver and trying to see if we can get one from the program mm -hmm. at least to help us. Because as I told you, it's two people from the group yeah, yeah, yeah. that come and assist us volunteer their service today. Yes. We had a volunteer that used to come every day, every other day with us, but now she has a baby and she's not able to attend to come in. Um, so that has helped us quite a lot. We have the vehicle which we have to service and service put gasoline. And then, <laughs> if you look at it, we have to, to spray it as it's getting dry right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have it for 10 years now, which is getting old. Yeah. So every time we have to change parts, change this, change yeah. that. So and there's a lot we have to do with that $25,000. But it looks like yeah. it is a big sum for yeah. us. But we say thank you. Mm -hmm. And also at the end, I want to say, our district rep, he has been, elderly has been very close to his heart. And he's trying his best because we have seen our client, mm -hmm. our plea the has there, and that is why he's trying his best to assist as much as he can. Whether the um, are coming to us, Minister Gila must have any chain way to say Guamu. He toujours là, on the Noel, he toujours got sponsor party by say Guamu. If they no sponsor party, Sarah, no pas sponsor it for a Samoan. If no pas pour Guamu, different from me na so as they, if me ne no be ne disia, you celebrate. You pas dalé pour ça. Tous les lundi. Et puis, ça c'est un commitment il fait. Le il a, as long as il a, ça a su compte. Mm -hmm. So il va y commitment ça là. Moi aussi je l'ai dit, merci pour lui, parce qu'il a gardé quand il a fait là, il n'a pas fait. Et puis, il n'a pas fait un peu de temps pour lui, et pour lui. Ça pour lui, pour lui, et pour toujours pour lui. Il n'a pas le nom mandé ben non dit non pas ni dis non pas ni da il ca acheter côté hier puis dire et ben ca faire pour faire euh c'est quoi mon nom service c'est quoi mon nom plus bon ça c'est un district rep anyways miss pierre thank you so much so 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 much god bless your heart god bless your endeavors Thank you for stepping up and we wish you all the best moving forward. Thank you, my dear. And you're both welcome to Mogwish. <laughs> all the time out <laughs> here. <laughs> Wash your hands. Wash them right. With soap and lots of water. Get between fingers. Get under the nails. Go above the wrists. Do this for no less than 15 seconds. Rinse properly. Dry with a clean towel. If there is no water, do the same washing motions with an alcohol-based hand sanitizer containing at least 70% alcohol. Wash your hands. Wash them right. This message brought to you courtesy the Bureau of Health Education of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Thank you so much, Ms. Pierre. Her passion and love was definitely felt while doing this interview. I wish her all the best and I want to say thank you so much for all of your years of service. Williana St. Rose is the treasurer of the Mongoose Club 60. She gives us some insight on the management of the group and how they continue to help persons in their community. She tells me for as long as she can remember, she has always been involved in community outreach and development. Let's take a look. Well, when we first knew we were going to get the funds, in fact, we were up in that ad, we were millionaires. <laughs> we were like, so much. Yeah, it's would be a nerd, yes. How much was it again? 25,000. Nice. But that's like a millionaire. Yes, exactly. Because you never had such. Yeah, so much, yes. But in going around the community, and especially with the people involved at the center, as the adults, when we visited this couple's house and saw the near the, the street of the building, we said, How? We will have to inject a little of that for it before we have anything on this building for the center. Mm -hmm. Because they are coming, and whatever they are coming, it's a rooted infestation. It was like 
I don't know. Not even in the ghetto do you get something like that. So believe me, our hearts are just love. And we said we will try and take out just the plan and replace it. But my dear, when we touched the first plan, everything was just done. So luckily, we said we were going to spend at least 2,000 of the funds to do that, but we had to accept it. But luckily, community persons, there's one gentleman who has been coming out to save us from spending and giving us the pain, some of us will do this. And a few other little sheets of planning for us to do the rest of the necessary things that we have to do. Yeah. I will be very, very, if you will be able to see the place yourself, because I am telling you, it's a lot of work. And have you started work already? You we started work. Okay. Now I had to call on the, well, right now it's not village council, it's constituency council, so mm -hmm. I I had to ask for assistance. At least to do a little cleaner. Yeah. But it's just a little, it's just a touch of the yeah. Yeah. Because there's so, so much to be done. Can you just, as we wrap up, give a call to St. Lucians, let them know the importance of contributing and giving back to um, to initiatives like Hub 60, right? And let them know how they can get on board. Well, St. Lucians, I'm telling you, and old. I think it is our duty to help one another. It's not going to be our sister, our brother, our immediate, but when we see a need, I think it is compulsory. I would even say compulsory for us to us. Because we are each other's people. Mm -hmm. And if we love, if we really truly know the meaning of love, we can use this word and create and change St. Lucia significantly mm -hmm. by helping and giving. Because when I and the group goes out there in the community and we see the need of some of our people, our brothers and sisters, it is heartbreaking. Yeah. So if somebody has a bed, maybe they don't want it, yeah. another person needs it. Mm -hmm. So do not throw it away or just store it away or whatever we can call and find out and get somebody to, to do. Because sometimes there's a saying that say some someone's rubbish is another one's treasure and so on. Because if you look into the area of some of our people where they have it, and to look at them as our brother and sister, it is very very happy. No messengers. I'm asking solutions if they ever come. Nothing is too small or too big to donate. Nice. Miss Andrews, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And that's it for this week's installment of Stepping Up. We are always on the lookout for anyone who is doing some amazing, noteworthy stuff in the country. Feel free to send me an email at steppingup758 at gmail.com to be featured. Thank you once again for joining us. I'm your host, Daniel Dubois. Until next time, keep safe and don't forget to keep stepping up.